temperature inversion from the outer core to the very center, principally due to neutrino losses from deep in the core. Getting back to the exterior view of our star, as the star climbs the red giant branch, the convection zone be continues to deepen. As we saw a bit ago, the base of this convection eventually reaches down into the regions where the chemical composition has been modified by nuclear processes. In particular, lithium burns via collisions with protons at relatively cool temperatures, and because of its rather large nuclear cross-section for reactions, this temperature necessary for the reaction is just below the temperature for hydrogen fusion via the proton-proton chain. Therefore, this has been happening as a minor energy source since its time as a protostar, and during this lithium burning, its most abundant isotope, lithium-7, collides with the proton and produces beryllium-8, which then quickly decays to become two helium nuclei. In so doing, lithium has become nearly depleted over most of the star's interior. Next, this shell-burning phase of the subgiant and red giant branch phases mean that the mass fraction of helium-3 light helium over the middle third of the star has also increased a lot. We didn't talk much about the CNO cycle for the Sun, but it's occurring in small quantities, which means that the core would be enhanced with carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. All this deep fusion transformation stayed in the core region for all of the star's life. But when the surface convection zone reaches deep into this chemically modified region, the processed material becomes mixed with the material above it, and we can observe the changes in the composition of photospheres of red giant stars, compared to their same mass main sequence counterparts. Astronomers have observed that the amount of surface lithium is lower and the helium is more abundant. Additionally, carbon-12 is dragged down and depleted at the surface and nitrogen-14 is raised up and is more abundant. Astronomers typically look at these as ratios, such as X12 for carbon-12 and X14 for nitrogen-14, which correspond to the relative depths of absorption features for the carbon-12 and nitrogen-14 observed in stellar atmospheres. It is observable ratios like these that demonstrate the transport of materials from the deep interior up to the surface. This change is called the first dredge up phase. The first here doesn't imply that all stars do the first and then the second and so on. The first here is another astronomerism. It means the dredge up of these elements to the surface in this process. More massive stars might skip this dredge up entirely, doing other dredge ups, which we'll cover later. What's amazing is that nature provides us with this means of directly observing the products of nuclear reactions deep within stellar interiors, and it is these observable changes in the surface composition that provide important tests of the predictions of stellar evolution theory. After 600 million years of climbing the red giant branch, it reaches the tip. For the Sun's future, the photosphere has made a radical transformation. The outer envelope has expanded to over 160 times that of the current radius. That's about three quarters of an astronomical unit and would engulf the orbit of Venus. Both Mercury and Venus would be inside the Sun, spelling their doom and destruction. The Earth won't be doing any better, and the mass loss from the Sun will be changing its orbit, steadily dragging it in. The surface of the Earth will be completely molten, all the water on Earth will have been gone already for billions of years, and sentient life will have needed to have moved on long ago. The Sun will have grown in luminosity to well over 2300 times its current luminosity, which would make the gases of Jupiter and Saturn boil away, leaving their strange cores exposed. The corresponding drop in surface temperature to about 3100 Kelvin means that the Sun will no longer be a golden G25 star, but will now be a garnet-colored M03, matching the colors of Antares and Betelgeuse in the sky. Down in the core, at the tip of the red giant branch, the central temperature and density have become about 10 to the 8th Kelvin and about 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 6th kilograms per cubic meter. This is now high enough that quantum mechanical tunneling through the Coulomb barrier between helium-4 nuclei becomes effective, allowing the triple alpha process to begin. This is a new fusion process for the star. It is the fusion of three helium nuclei into oxygen, 
All this helium has accumulated in the core as a result of the proton-proton chain reaction, and the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen, or CNO cycle, is now available for use. The first fusion reaction of two helium-4 nuclei produces beryllium-8. Now, beryllium-8 is very unstable and will decay back to smaller nuclei with a half-life of about 8 times 10 to the minus 17 seconds. But if, before it does so, it encounters another alpha particle, it may fuse with it to produce carbon-12. This first reaction is endothermic, meaning it takes energy to do. So in addition to being a huge electrostatic barrier to overcome, there's a need for additional kinetic energy from the nuclei to create that beryllium nucleus. That kinetic energy comes from the high temperature of the nuclei as a gas. This temperature and subsequent thermal motion must be so high as to provide about 92 kilo electron volts, which is the equivalent of a high energy X-ray photon. This gas has to be hot. Luckily, the second step, which has to happen fast before the beryllium decays, is exothermic, releasing a high energy gamma ray. It is this release of energy that is the new fusion source. Because of these conditions for this process, a high Coulomb barrier for the first step, a need for additional energy to create the beryllium nucleus other than just the two input parts, and a fast decay rate demanding a fast find of a fusion partner in this hellish do -si do all means that this whole process is extremely temperature dependent. The triple alpha fusion reaction rate goes like temperature to the 40th power. That is, if the temperature rises by 10% when it's 100 million Kelvin, then the fusion rate goes up 45 times. If the temperature happens to double to say 200 million Kelvin, then the fusion rate goes up a trillion times. It also means that if the temperature dips lower than 100 million Kelvin, the process shuts off completely. Triple alpha is a cauldron of chaotic fusion.